Welcome to Clay Shooter TV, our brand new monthly programme brought to you by the team of experts from Clay Shooter magazine. This month, Dren and Kenderdine will be reviewing the Maruku MK38 Sporter and Laravel's Power Red cartridges. Plus, we'll be bringing you all the latest news from the clay shooting world. But first up, here's Simon O'Leary, who will be talking us through how to shoot driven targets. Hello and welcome to Hound Hall Shooting and the new series, Technique. Over the coming months, I'm going to endeavour to take you through a range of sporting targets, uh, but for the purposes of today, we're going to start with the driven target. Now, this is a nemesis of most. This is that target that starts way out at 12 o'clock and comes directly towards you and over your head. So it's quite an awkward shot, almost a target that you'll be shooting at without seeing. We're going to take a closer look at how we approach this, and today we are powered by Ely. Before we get set up to take the shot, I just want to run through the two different styles of approach. Now, most people will know that there's three styles of shooting, and that's maintain lead, swing through, and pull away, which is otherwise known as the method. Now, for a driven target, maintain lead is going to be very difficult because one would be placing the muzzle directly in front of the target. Therefore, we can't see anything. So for the purposes of today, we're going to use the two remaining styles, which are swing through and pull away, otherwise known as the method. Let me show you both of those. OK, so I've just got Adam to zoom in so I can show you these two approaches. The first one is swing through. This is our target and this is our stick that represents a gun, keeping it nice and sustainable. Now, target's thrown on the call of pull. As the target comes out, the muzzle is placed behind to then swing through, apply lead and take the shot. That swing through. Let's go through that again. Target comes out, pull, gun goes behind, swing through, applied lead, take the shot. <clears throat> now a little sideline on swing through, be very clear that when you put the muzzle behind the target, that it's tight in. Okay, I've got a term which is negative lead. A lot of people will tend to put the muzzle in miles behind, put all the power into catching up, just taking, you know, just past the target and therefore they're missing behind. So swing through, just to recap, as the target's released, get the muzzle in nice and tight, power through, positive lead, take the shot. The second style is pull away, obviously otherwise known as the method. Slight variation, again, target's released on the call of pull. As we see the target, we immediately mount onto the clay. So we're literally putting the muzzle on the target to then accelerate, pull away to the desired lead to then take the shot. So one more time on that one. Pull, place on, away and shoot. They're the two methods we're going to use. Let's now take a little look on how we get set up for the shot. OK, so we've run through the two approaches to shoot the driven target. Now we're going to get set up and get in position to do just that. Now, just for clarity, in a minute, I'm going to get Adam to show you the target. It's coming from directly in front of me, traveling over my head. So we could suggest that it's coming from 12 o'clock, if you like, traveling towards six o'clock behind me. So let's get the body set up in readiness. Now, I'm a right handed shooter. So in effect, my feet are going to be one and two in relation to the line of the target. So Clay's coming from 12, my front foot's pointing out at one, my back foot's pointing out at two. Now this will evolve over time. This is just a starter. Some people might be sort of on a slight variation of this. It doesn't matter. It's about getting the body in a nice neat position so that you can best mount the gun. Now from here, we're slightly heavy on the front foot, say 60%. Nose over toes is, you know, quite a good simple way to remember the stance. From there, we'd be taking the gun and putting the stock on the side of the chest, beginning of the rib cage. This is what you might call a standard gun down. From there, as we look out to the target, the muzzle is in relation 
to topography. Now by that, what I mean is we want the muzzle at a panoramic height to the target, so it's not too low for extra labor, and indeed it's not too high that it's actually obscuring your view. I'll get Adam to show you that in a minute. So just to recap, target from 12, one and two on the feet, nose over toes, slightly forward, stock of the gun by the chest, muzzle into relation to topography, and of course, not forgetting at this point, we would ensure that we've got our safety features on glasses, earmuffs and hat. Let's take a look at the shot. Okay, we've run through the approach, cartridges are in the gun, I'm now going to spin round, earmuffs on, and we're going to take a pair of shots. This first pair are going to be taken in the swing-through style. Let's have a look. Pull. Pull. Okay, so you saw the first pair in the swing-through style. I'm loaded again. Now I'm going to look at the next pair in Polloway, otherwise known as Method. Let's take a look at this one. Pull. A very subtle difference between the two, but it's a case of you practicing and trying to find a style that best works for you. Okay, so you've seen me shoot the two styles on the driven target. We did the swing through, mounting behind, and we did the pull away, otherwise known as the method, mounting on and pulling away. Now, the unique sort of swerve on this target, if you like, is that by the time you've come through the target, swing through, or away from the target with pull away, we now can't see the bird. So the one key element with this type of target is to utilize your timing. And by that, what I mean is that as the muzzle's coming behind or to, that it's a smooth movement all the way through, pulling through or away from the bird as you take the shot. One consistent speed that's actually just ever so slightly faster than the target. Now there's probably a separate subject here for another day. If you've got a, spot, a target that feels sort of slow, you're gonna be moving just a little bit quicker. If you've got a target you feel is fast, then you're gonna be moving a little bit faster still. This is timing. So it's, whether it's behind or on the target, it's all one smooth speed, slightly faster than the clay. Now remember, when you're practicing, a couple of key points here, if you're new to this or it's a target that you have struggled with, mount, shooting it gun down. Remember that that stock is gonna come up under the cheekbone. Okay, so the muzzles align with the eye and you're on the line of the target. A little mismount is gonna throw you high or low. Uh, and also if you're lifting the head throughout the shot, that's gonna create a muzzle flip. And again, is gonna throw you offline. Remember what I said about the speeds of the target. Don't think that you've got to hammer it really quickly because an overzealous swing could end in you stopping the gun and still missing behind. So you want to take care that the timing is on point and that your practice is nice and slow and methodical. And if you do a few pairs and it's not your day, leave it alone and come back to it another time. I hope this has been of some help. From breaking targets to breaking stories, you're now watching Clay Shooter TV News. Our main headlines this month, Team GB shooters bring home seven medals from the Qatar Open. Gosport and Leon Solent Clay Target Club are closing their doors and why this year is going to be a big year for our British Paratrap shooters. The Qatar Open Shotgun Championship was held in February in Doha. 156 shooters representing 52 countries took part. Tom Betts won gold in junior men's trap. Matt Coward Holly and Aaron Heading claimed a gold and bronze respectively in senior men's trap. 
Lucy Hall claimed silver in women's trap, while Emily Hibbs bagged bronze in women's skeet. Finally, Ben Llewellyn won a silver medal in men's skeet and Mitchell Brooker-Smith made it a golden hat-trick for Team GB with a gold in junior men's skeet. Also, a special mention for Maddie Russell, who bagged an individual gold in the ladies' junior skeet and a mixed pair silver at the Cyprus Grand Prix. A huge well done from all of us for all the GB shooters who put in an incredible performance on the world stage. After over 50 years of shooting, the site where Gospel and Leon Solent run its shoots has been sold by its owners. And the club hosted its last ever shoot on Sunday the 26th of February. We'll have more details for you next month on how that went for the members of GNL Clays. Paratrap athletes are quietly hopeful that their discipline may be included alongside Olympic trap at the next Commonwealth Games. Shooting has been given the go-ahead by the International Paralympic Committee, so our paratrap shooters are now waiting to hear whether they also have a chance of shooting at LA 2028. If so, they will need to fight for their quota places in 2025. With all this in mind, the UK Paratrap team has recently set up Paratrap UK, an organisation designed to give shooters a unified voice and aid them in their quest for better funding, training and support so they have the strongest team possible come 2025. We will be following their progress this year and we'll be catching up with them for a proper chat in an upcoming episode. We have two fantastic competitions for you to enter this month. Firstly, a chance to win an Ely Hawk clay shooting bundle worth over £240. The bundle includes 500 Ely Olympic Blues cartridges, an Ely polo shirt and an Ely Pro Kit bag. We have also teamed up with the East Anglian Game Fair to give away three family day tickets to the event, which is held at the Euston Estate near Thetford on the 22nd and 23rd of April. To enter either of these competitions, Click the link in the description below the video. Austin Shooting Ground is getting ready to host the English Open Compact on the 1st of April. There are still some spaces left, so if you'd like to enter, go to the BICTSF website now. And finally, after a recent member survey, the CPSA's name remains the CPSA. Don't forget, if you join or rejoin the CPSA today, Using the link below the video, you'll be in with a chance of winning your second year's membership free, plus a CPSA cartridge bag. From breaking news to breaking triggers, here's Drennan reviewing Maruku's MK38 Sporter, followed by Larvel's Power Reds. Welcome to Oakhead Shooting Ground uh, here in Staffordshire in the UK. Today we're going to be reviewing the very well known Maruku MK38 but in grade 5. Now uh, the MK38 has been around for a long time now and it's probably one of the most famous guns for shooters in winning titles. It's won a lot of stuff over the years from bought in trap and it goes on and on and on. The one that we've got here, as I just said, is a grade 5. Comes in 30 inch and 32. Backboard barrels. For those of you that don't know what backboard means. It helps reduce recoil, especially when you're shooting um, heavier rounds, really, and if you're susceptible to recoil. Multi-choke this one. Comes with five chokes. Two flush ones. And three extended ones. So we're going to put in two halves for today. <coughs> just drop this on the action. As I just mentioned there, the action. The action comes with a 10 year warranty, which is pretty good really. The wood, which you'll see from, from close as we do in a minute, has the three-year warranty 
Oh, look at that stunning piece of wood that is. That's whoa. And the barrels have a three year warranty as well. Barrels, high performance steel proofed. I know people say that special proof, super proof, and all. High performance steel. In other words, it's got a fleur de lis on it. So your big daddy steel rounds, you can put through it. It is bored to three inches as well, so you can go, if you wanted to, you could go and shoot wild fowling cartridges through this. It's proof to do it, no problem at all. Nice schnabel forend. It's nice and slim in the fit of the hand. Not too slim where you feel as though that the gun has lost itself and it's dissolved. The stock, Maruku actually have changed the dimensions of this and they've followed the browning pattern on the drop of the cone now. They've actually lowered it. So if you're used to browning shooting, you'll find that the Maruku is slightly higher and the browning is slightly lower. There are the dimensions and I'll let you figure that out. Just for those that like to have a look at things like that. Got a three stage adjustable trigger. So you can adjust the trigger for the length of pull. It's in the three stage. Easy peasy, lemon and squeezy to adjust. It's a small Allen key in the bottom, all the way back or middle, whichever you prefer. The checkering panels on this, as with all Marukos and Brownies really, they're always just clean and tidy and they're put in the place where you really need them. And I know that sounds obvious, but there's a lot of guns out there where they put the checker in and you just go, mm, did somebody slip on the design there? You could say it's got a slight palm swell in the stock. It is there, it's just enough that you can just feel it. You can grip this gun lovely. It comes in very nice and it feels solid in the shoulder. The barrels on most Marines, straight line on the rib, parallel rib from the action all the way to the end. Centre bead, which for me is, I just love centre beads on guns. I know there's a lot of people out there say you don't use them. Yeah, you do. They're there as a reference, and especially when you're setting certain guns up. This doesn't come, this particular one hasn't got an adjustable stock on it for lifting the height on it. Single selective trigger, so you can set top barrel, especially if you're using those flush chokes and you're on, let's say you're on a pheasant shoot because you very easily use this on a pheasant shoot. So you'd want your full choke in first and then your open choke. Solid rubber pad. Yeah. What's that going to do? It's certainly going to grip in the shoulder, and it does. Is it going to soak any recoil up? Uh, no. But it is a pretty looking gun. Lovely action as always from Maruk, which is the browning really, made in Japan. And it's just finished off. All Marukus I always find seem to be finished off that bit better than their uh, cousin. So they always tend to come with better grade wood as well. And it's a simple gun. Now, I will tell you, you need your shreddies in the morning before you come out shooting. It's heavy. And I don't know why, for a competition kind of grade gun sporter, but it's got a solid central rib and not ventilated. Now, I usually like loathe guns that aren't double ventilated. I mean, you've got a top ventilated rib, that's standard with these things, you know, but it's not on there. However, the weight, if you use basic physics, the weight of this gun is heavier by a few ounces. But it will make a difference how it shoots and it will soak up recoil better. So you have to compromise one with the other. So where you've got this solid pad that's going to do nothing really but grip, the solid central rib there, that's that's really going to aid in soaking uh, the recoil up. As always with Brownings, the top levers are always finished off fantastically. And you've heard me mention before about top levers and safeties. It's like an afterthought in the shooting world. Browning have always made fantastic top levers. Easy to open, lovely feel with the thumb on it to open it. And listen to that, that's quality. 
Some people say it's clanky. Mm, no, that's engineering. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. That's just a lovely, lovely gun. Safety catch. See any of my videos, it's my absolute pet hate. Safety catches. They're either really fantastic or just this is fantastic it just does exactly what it needs to do but with quality it's got a lovely glide for selecting the barrels doesn't get hung up you don't feel feel as though you can't get hold of it it also doesn't feel like somebody's welded a lump of steel on a piece of another steel for your thumb lovely finished gun as always with my roots lovely finished but as i always say it's not an ornament it looks pretty but what does it shoot like We'll find out in the next segment. Right, we're going to start off as I always do on a simple clay with any gun. Doesn't matter what model it is, how expensive it is. We're going to start off with 21 gram from Fiocchi. We're going to shoot a simple incoming bird, and then we're going to work up the grade of ammunition. Paul. Yeah. Lovely, I can have very little recoil on that, which I'd expect. Right, we're moving up now to really superb. So, expecting a bit more. Well, and you can tell straight away as you're going up the grades of ammo there, the differences in kill. Right, Fiocchi F Black now, 28 gram. Specifically, actually designed for autos. So I'm expecting quite a lot of Jerry. Well, yeah. Starting to feel a bit more recoil from this now. This is such a forgiving gun. Uh, now on Express Supreme. Well. Recoil on that is in the centre of the action. You don't really feel it smacking at the back. The weight of the barrel, what I said to you earlier about this being the centre rib not being ventilated, that weight is soaking that recoil up. Okay, well let's go and shoot something that's a bit more testing, but you've seen from there, difference in quality of ammo. It'll shoot 21 gram. Some inertia actions don't, so let's move on. Now gonna shoot it right to left about 35 yards out ish uh, I'm not going to shoot 21 gram on it I'm just going to shoot some Fiocchi F Black 28 gram because it is a little bit further out so let's see what it's like on that this should tell me a lot about how the gun swings with those barrels with that central rib being solid giving it that smoother balance it should well And it does lovely glide lovely swing to that right we're now going to shoot something else so i'm going to go and get some different ammo and um, we'll see you back here you're going to shoot two different targets now here with the maruko mk38 pro 5 going over an overhead when the gun goes bang we're going to send it's a crow incomer and we're going to be using express's supreme Got a Basgari Pelagri. Next. Ooh. Very nice. Paul. You'll probably see that I'm struggling with the overhead with this. Simple reason is, there's that much drop on this for me. I shoot with a very high comb. If you had an adjustable version, you could crank that up. So what's happening is, as I'm coming onto the target, because it's what I'm used to shooting, I'm losing my eye in the block. So I'm gonna try a different style to see if I can get around that a little bit. So here we go. Pull. Pull. 
Pull. So what I've done, changed my style. Instead of tuning it with collapsing lead, I've come through it as a crosser, pulled off it, and shot it as a quarter in dropping clay really. So yeah, you can, that's the beauty of these sort of guns. They're very forgiving where you can change your style and I've just changed my style completely because I don't shoot overhead targets really like that. And I've just changed the method and it's already worked instantly. So yeah, that's why I used to shoot these when I was a kid, Marukus. You can make mistakes, big ones as well. <laughs> And recover with it so you got it on camera me missing correcting it with a different style and it just does exactly what you want it to do so yeah mk38 grade 5 it's as easy as opening a packet of crisps really to shoot lovely good soaks up recoil shoots nice you've seen it shoot 21 gram all the way up to top of the grade ammunition up to the supreme range i thought i was going to be affected by this not having a scent yeah, a ventilated centre rib actually it's really worked well with it being solid there you go the MK38 grade 5 30 or 32 in perfect little gun really What I'm reviewing today is Lyle Vale Express's Power Red, get ready for this, hear this, 27 gram. Comes in two different forms, plastic wad, which has got a white label, and a fibre, which has the green label. Just brilliant, isn't it? So easy to identify. A 70 mil case, so you can shoot them in an auto. 8mm brass and one shot size, seven and a half. It was designed for it's designed for the club shooter. It's designed for people that are just starting out as well. Um, people that are suffering with recoil, people that aren't suffering with recoil. It also is doing 1500 feet a second. Which is hopping on. That's getting on, that's competition grade territory, but it's not designed for real competition shooting. It's designed, like I said, for the people who are going out. The 50 bird shooter, the 60 bird shooter, kind of male and female are going out, having a knock around the fields with their mates. Or, like on a serious ground like I'm at today at Oak Edge, they will do club clays. And club clays pretty much only. Which brings me on to Prices of cartridges are varying up and down like the North Sea at the moment, and that's how it is. But a lot of people go and buy a cheap cartridge thinking it's going to go and compete with, say, something like a Supreme. It's not. And even the people that make these will tell you that. Which is otherwise what it looks like. It does. It doesn't look wow, but it doesn't look bad. I call them the little red devils and not only the good on intermediate shooting club shooting these are just getting into it the fiber especially is very very good on a simulated game day because there's not much recoil on these cartridges at all whether you're shooting the plastic or the fiber but like anything with cartridges you can write about it, I've been doing it for years, and you write out 800 words, 1,000 words, 2,000. Really, the only way to test what a cartridge is really like, whether you like it or not, whether it's any good, on your preference, is to go and shoot it, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to pick a few stands out here at Oak Edge. I'm going to use my usual UGB. I'm not going to change the choke either. I know what she does. I'm going to use half choke for everything. But when I say everything, there are a few stands here at Oak Edge that I'm not even going to shoot these at. They're not designed to do it, and you're just wasting your time and your money 
and your ability as well so we're going to go around we're going to shoot some intermediate club level targets with a cartridge that's designed to do that so we'll see you in the next segment so we're going to start off with the power red fiber as i showed you earlier in the film that's the one that's got the green label on it on the box or on the case it says fiber okay now with all cartridges that i test and I suggest this for everybody start off with something that's fairly simple and you can hit don't go starting to shoot 40, 50, 60 yards out get used to the cotton bearing in mind these won't do 60 yards they're not designed for that so I'm going to start with the fibre or an incoming clay Four. from that that those are good kills now the plastic version which doesn't have fibre written on it so it's the power red plastic on the same clay Paul and already I can tell the difference between both of them so we're going to go and shoot something else now. You've just seen the fibre and the plastic shooting an incomer. No point shooting anymore. They do exactly what they're designed to do. So we'll see you on the next stand. Okay, going to shoot the fibre now at a right to left crosser. This is what I would say really is its maximum range. Yes, it'll do it. It'll do it comfortably. But a little bit further on, it starts to... It's not designed for it basically. So anyway, the fibre first, a right to left crosser. Oh! That's what, 40 yards away? Yeah. And it absolutely smoked them. But I know this cartridge as well and it will do a little bit further. It's a club round. Right onto the plastic, same target. Whoa. And there you go, that's 40 yards. It's a 40 yard crosser with a cartridge designed for club shooting and 27 gram in a seven and a half. Um, Emily's here and the cameraman and yeah the camera should be able to show you that it broke them convincingly so my conclusion of Lava Alexis Press 27 gram power red in sevens and half sevens and halves only they share the same name they share the same shell casing and ferrule lead powder and it ends there they are different some people might not notice the difference biggest difference you'll notice is the sound we get with most uh, fiber cartridges making that uh, uh, sound we know what we're talking about uh, and the plastic just doesn't make that sound but here's the biggest difference for me as a shooter there is without doubt a slight difference in recoil between the two. The fibre has got that little bit more, <laughs> which most fibres have, unless you get into the really expensive stuff. And so if you like something that's got a little bit of bite in it, and quite a lot of shoes do, fibre. If you don't, plastic. Which one's better? Neither of them. Unless you're environmentally friendly, you're on a shoot, and you can only shoot fibre cartridges, that one, without doubt. Simulator game day, that one, without a doubt. Club shooting, either of them. Absolutely either of them. Which one would I choose? Definitely for simulated stuff. But I would go for the plastic on a clay sheet that you could. And I'll tell you why. On the last part that we did where I said it's coming to the end of its performance really yes it will kill a little bit further but you need to know your maximum ranges the plastic wad for me 
was holding its pattern at that range better but we're talking the extremes of what the cartridge is designed to do so the alchemist has always designed something for a market for a price for a certain level of shooter and it really is down to which one suits you for an intermediate shell for an intermediate shooter and if that's what you are these are perfect if you're looking for a podium finish for great britain you're looking at the wrong cartridge if you're looking for a cartridge that's good on the wallet it kills as you see so well done to express for making a cartridge for a big section of shooters actually which are intermediate hobby shooters there you go power red from lava alex red and i'll see you next time That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed our first show. Please remember to like and subscribe and look out for our next show on April the 10th. See you then.